Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? When it comes to retro computing, Windows XP has been gaining in popularity over the last few years, and that's generally related to the kinds of games that people want to play. If you build your own retro computer, you're gonna need to install a copy of the OS on there. Now, getting Windows XP is kind of outside the scope of this video, but I do want to tell you about two cool tricks that can help speed up and streamline that OS installation process. The first one has to do with Windows updates. If you do a fresh install of Windows, best practice is going to be to go out and get all of the available updates and patches for it. Even if you use a Windows XP install disk that has Service Pack 3 built in, Microsoft continued to release updates for quite a few years after releasing SP3. So it can be very uh, time consuming to go through and get all of those patches installed. Uh, not to mention the fact that even if you do have Service Pack 3 already on your machine, there are still a couple of prerequisite updates you have to install by hand in order to get Windows Update itself to even work. The last time I installed XP on a machine, the number of service like updates and, and hot fixes and patches and everything that were available through Windows Update was kind of staggering. And it took several hours for the computer to get through all of them. That was just a huge waste of time. So the community has gotten together and some very bright individuals came up with an unofficial service pack it's available, of course, for free, and it's basically just kind of a big roll-up of all of those updates that Microsoft released after Service Pack 3 in one nice big bundle. It's very easy to install after you've already gotten the OS on the computer. It's just basically double-click and let it run instead of having to go through the onerous task of dealing with Windows Update and stuff like that. So that's a much more streamlined, easier way to get all of those updates that you need installed on the computer in one shot without having to go through a whole bunch of prerequisite steps first. But that's still kind of a manual process, right? I mean, you've got to get the computer installed with the OS. You've got to get some basic drivers on there so you can copy the file over for that SP4 update, whether you burn it onto a CD or stick it in a USB flash drive, whatever. You have to go through the process of it installing Service Pack 4 and rebooting. So that brings us to suggestion slash tip number two, and that is a really, really cool utility that lets you build all of this kind of stuff directly into the Windows XP installer. It's a utility called Enlight. It's actually been around for a very long time. It came out back when Windows XP was still like the predominant OS. And it lets you do all sorts of really cool things. What's even nicer about Enlight is that even though it's a relatively old application, it still works fine on modern versions of Windows. So let's take a look at it. It's pretty easy to step through kind of all the options that Enlight presents you with. It's a very logical workflow through it. The first thing it's going to ask you for is where are the installer files for Windows XP? In my case, I've gotten everything stored in a folder here on the desktop, and I just have an ISO image of the XP Pro with Service Pack 3 installer. On Windows 10, you can just double click that and it'll automatically mount that like disk image as if it were a real CD. So it's very simple to just open that file up and then point Enlight to it. It then wants you to pick an empty folder to save everything into. And then it'll just copy all the files over into that folder that you made for you. It'll ask you if there's a preset that you want to use. This is in case you have kind of a bunch of settings that you've used in Enlight before and you want to apply them again. Maybe you're building another image or something like that. In this case, I don't have one, so I can just hit next. And then this is where you can select all of the really cool options and steps that you want to use within Enlight. There's a lot of power here, so be sure to go through and kind of check out all the options. It can really save you a lot of time and let you end up with a very, very customized Windows XP install in the end. In my case, I'm going to integrate that a service pack, in this case, that unofficial service pack four. I'm also gonna throw some drivers in there. 
And then I'm also going to go through and check out some of the setup options as well. And then in the end, we will build an install image. So let's simply pick that service pack four that we want to use. And it'll automatically inject it directly into our installation. This is a process called slip streaming. It's existed for quite a while and you can do it separately outside of Enlight, but it's really nice that it just has it as a built-in option. It saves you quite a bit of time. Now I'm going to add some drivers because the particular laptop that I want to install this image on, well, it's missing a whole bunch of drivers from the default install. You can inject drivers directly into your Windows XP install using Enlight. What's also really cool is if you've ever had a computer with kind of a non-standard hard drive controller or one that XP just doesn't have drivers for out of the box, you may be familiar with the process of having to hit F6 during the initial setup and supplying a hard disk driver for the XP installer. The thing that sucks about that process is it literally only works with floppy disks. What's cool is the drivers you inject here are also available to the XP installer program, so you don't need to worry about building a special floppy disk with hard disk drivers on it if the XP installer can't find your drive. It's already just built in to the, uh, to the installer by using this process. In my case, I'm just gonna inject an entire folder full of drivers. You can just do this in one shot and it'll just pull them all in and make them available during the install. So for all the hardware in the computer that I have drivers for, I just don't have to install it after the fact. That hardware will just work as if the driver had come out of the box with Windows. And here's where we can get into some of the really cool unattended install options. Basically, you can set stuff on this screen that are like kind of the default answers for when you're going through the XP setup. So you can potentially set all of these options in such a way that you don't have to answer any of the normal questions that XP asks you during the setup. Like what's your name? What's your product key? What time zone are you in? All that kind of stuff you can kind of pre-fill and just bake into it which is really slick. You don't have to do all of these and anything you don't answer, it'll just prompt you for like usual, but this is another really nice way to save time. You can also do some additional kind of options related to the install. You can specify some additional settings, even as deep as like what the folder name is for the Windows install directory. If you wanna override that, that's normally a setting that the XP installer doesn't ask you, doesn't give you an option to change. You can change it in here along with just a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. Now, there are some additional pages in here where you can remove specific components. You need to be careful if you go and do that because some components have dependencies on others and Enlight gives you kind of enough leeway to screw yourself if you don't know what you're doing. In this case though, I'm just gonna go ahead and start the process. We're done, we just hit next, and now we have the option for what we wanna do with the you know ultimate installer that we've made here. In my case, I'm going to create an ISO image file because I don't have an optical drive attached to this computer. You can label it however you want. And when you're ready, just click make ISO, save it to wherever you want and it'll create that file for you. If you have an optical drive attached to the computer, Enlight can instead just burn the installer directly to a disk for you, save you an extra step. There is one thing you need to keep in mind though, and that is the size of the installer. The normal Windows XP installer fits pretty comfortably within a standard CD-ROM. However, if you go nuts adding service packs and hot fixes and other patches and especially drivers or potentially other programs, that installer could become bigger than would fit on a CD. You've got a couple of options in this case. That's going to affect me here because my ultimate image file is a little bit over a gigabyte in size, well bigger than what would fit on a CD. But the laptop I'm going to install this on has a DVD drive, so I can just burn this to a blank DVD disc instead. 
Another option is to use one of a few different third-party boot helper utilities that can allow you to basically install Windows XP off of a USB flash drive. That's not something that was really an option back when XP was predominant. It's something that community support has kind of added on later on. Now, this is such a cool program. It, it only works on Windows 2000 XP and Server 2003. So you may be like, well, uh, gee, I wish this existed for newer versions of Windows because this can save a whole ton of time. It actually does. It doesn't go by the name Enlight. The guy who wrote this kind of split it off and wrote a separate program for Windows 7, 8, and 10 called NT Lite. And it's even more powerful. That's kind of a separate episode in and of itself to go through just because of how many options there are. A lot of the options in that program are very similar to what we saw here in Enlight with the ability to add in drivers and options and, and software updates and that sort of thing. But how much deeper you can get into the install process with NT Lite is just kind of mind blowing. You can do some really custom stuff with it. That's just fantastic. And the best thing is this is all free software to use. So I'm gonna include links to not only the unofficial service pack four, but also Nlight and NT Lite down in the description if you wanna check them out. But for now, if anything, this is one really cool tool and well, hopefully uh, you find it useful too. If you like this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.